Hydrohalogenation, that's going to be the topic of this lesson, and this is going to be the first in a series of alkene addition reactions. And for your standard hydrohalogenation, you're going to add a hydrogen and a halogen across an alkene. And in this case, that's typically either HCl, HBr, HI as your reagent, therefore adding either an H and a Cl, H and Br, H and I across that alkene. Turns out it is Markovnikov addition. There is no stereoselectivity associated with it, and it goes through a carbocation intermediate, which means it is subject to carbocation rearrangements in certain cases. Now, there is one one special case here with HBr, this doesn't apply to HCl or HI, this last one here, but with HBr, if you add a peroxide, R-O-O-R is our abbreviation here, it will actually go through a totally different mechanism. It will go anti-Markovnikov. This mechanism will involve radicals instead of a carbocation, so no rearrangements, and there's also no stereoselectivity with this version as well. Now this lesson is part of my brand new organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. You'll be notified every time I post a new lesson. So the first alkene addition reaction we're going to look at is hydrohalogenation, where we're going to add a hydrogen and a halogen across the alkene. And you might recall we, uh, uh, when we studied elimination reactions, we did dehydrohalogenation, where you lost a hydrogen and a halogen and formed an alkene. It's the exact opposite of hydrohalogenation here. So elimination and addition, exactly inverse reactions here. So uh, instead of forming an alkene, we're going to be consuming an alkene and forming two new sigma bonds. Now with hydrohalogenation, your reagents are either HCl, HBr, HI, and you can either add an H and a Cl, an H and a Br, or an H and an I. And so in this case, it also goes Markovnikov. So here's an example here. The H ended up on the less substituted side. The bromine ended up on the more substituted side. So we've got our primary carbon here and our secondary carbon here. The, the H went on the primary, the bromine went on the secondary. That is Markovnikov addition. So, and finally, the stereoselectivity, it turns out, is none, but the only time we would care is if we formed two chiral centers anyways. And in this case, where the bromine added has two identical methyl groups, not four different groups, not a chiral center. And where the hydrogen added has three identical hydrons, not four different groups, not a chiral center. With no chiral centers formed, we get just the one achiral product. All right, so this is an example, but we definitely want to take some time to look at the mechanism here. So if we take a look. In the first step of every mechanism we know, the alkene is the nucleophile, and whatever else you're adding is the electrophile. In this case, HBr is a strong acid. You learned in Gen Chem, it's also a strong electrophile, and it's going to get attacked here, specifically that partially positive hydrogen. Hydrogen can only have one bond, so if we're forming a new one here, the old one here has to break. And normally I wouldn't draw in this hydrogen, but I'm going to draw it in here so we can kind of keep track. That hydrogen again bonds on the less substitute side. Notice I didn't draw it in the product up here. So, and I'll draw it on the first couple here, but eventually I'm going to stop drawing these H's. So, because you're not going to draw them on your exam either. Cool, but the H adds on the less substitute side, and the more substitute side is now missing a bond. He used to have a pi bond, now he doesn't. Only three bonds, and he's a carbocation. And then we also form this bromide ion here. Cool, and that's step one of the mechanism. And because we formed a carbocation here, you typically will have to check for rearrangements. Now it turns out there's only gonna be three of the reactions for all the alkene reactions that form a carbocation, and therefore they're the only three that are subject to rearrangements, but this is indeed one of them. Whether you use HCl, HBr, HI, you're gonna have to check to see if there's rearrangements. Well, we've got a secondary carbocation. You generally only have a chance of rearranging to one of the adjacent carbons, which are both primary in this case, and therefore they would not be more stable carbocations, and there's no favorable rearrangement for this reaction. Cool. Now this is not rocket science here. So if you can identify who's electron rich and who's electron poor, it will help you immensely in memorizing some of these mechanisms. And in this case, with a negative formal charge, bromine's definitely electron rich, and that makes him a likely candidate to be a nucleophile. So, and our carbocation with a positive formal charge, definitely electron poor, makes him a likely candidate to be an electrophile. And in typical nucleophilic attack mechanistic step, the nucleophile attacks the electrophile, i.e. the nucleophile attaches to the electrophile. And so this bromine is just attaching to that carbon right here, which looks like our final product.
cool. And again, we added the H on the less substitute side, the bromine on the more substitute side, and that was Markovnikov addition. Also, we didn't form any chiral centers, and so we just get that one achiral product. Now, it turns out we have a second option with hydrohalogenation. So here we had HCl, HBr, HI, works exactly the same way. But for specifically HBr and HBr only, you have another option. With HBr, you can mix it with what's called a peroxide. And ROOR is our abbreviation for a peroxide, where those Rs could simply be hydrogen, which would be hydrogen peroxide. HOOH is H2O2. Or they could just be some sort of, more commonly, uh, make this an organic peroxide, make them like methyl groups or benzene rings or something like this. So, but oftentimes, more commonly, you'll just see it written generically just like this. And I like to think that HBr and ROAR is the name of the reagent. So we'll see why that's convenient in just a second. And in this specific reaction, we're gonna add an H and a bromine. However, it's not gonna go Markovnikov now. It's gonna go anti-Markovnikov. And so I like to think of HBr and ROAR. The ROAR scares HBr into going anti-Markovnikov. So just my stupid little way of remembering it. And there's also no stereoselectivity in this reaction either. Now the mechanism of this one, we are not gonna cover just yet. So mechanistically on this one, it goes through a radical intermediate, not carbocation, so totally different mechanism. So, and we'll study those in the radical chapter a little bit later. So, but suffice it to say, it does go anti-Markovnikov, but not because we're violating the rules of chemistry or trying to get the less stable carbocation or anything like that. We're not even going through a carbocation, totally different mechanism. So, but if we predict some products here, if we did the exact same reaction, but added some peroxide with our HBr, now all of a sudden the bromine ends up on the less substituted carbon, the hydrogen would have added to the more substituted carbon, and there's our product. So neither one of the carbons that became sp3 hybridized are chiral centers, neither of them have four different groups, and so we get just the one achiral product. All right, so so far we haven't formed any chiral centers and it makes this really easy. Don't have to show any stereochemistry, get one achiral product, life is good. So I wanna give you an example where we actually do form a chiral center. And so let's do one more here and this time around I'll use HCl, could have used HCl, HBr, HI. So still going Markovnikov then, normal hydrohalogenation. So first step, we're gonna go grab an H, the bond to chlorine breaks and we're gonna form a carbocation here, and I highly recommend we just draw those carbocations out just to keep track. So the H ends up on the less substitute side of the alkene over here, not drawn in. So, and the more substitute side is gonna be the carbocation. In this case, it's secondary. The two adjacent carbons, one's primary, one's secondary. Neither one is better. This one's equally stable, but it has to get better to be a favorable rearrangement for one of the adjacent carbons. So no favorable rearrangement here, and that's where chlorine ultimately is going to attach. And if we take a look, we'll see something different here. Where the H added is not a chiral center. There's not four different groups. But where the chlorine added does indeed have four different groups. A chlorine, a hydrogen that's not drawn in, a methyl, and the carbon of an ethyl. Four different groups, that's a chiral center. And this is not sufficient answer. So with a chiral center, it could exist as R or S. And if you form one chiral center, no matter which alkene reaction you're looking at, all of them will always form R and S. And so you could represent this one of a couple of different ways. So one, and the most common way, is just to draw both different versions out. One where the chlorine is a wedge, and one where the chlorine's a dash. So draw both R and S. So although some professors will also do this, and we are kind of the kings of laziness in organic chemistry, and the fewer things we can draw, the better. And so sometimes we don't even show the stereochemistry on that chiral center, but we draw plus minus, just to show that you can get both the positive and the minus in Angemer. Another way of saying you get both the R and the S. So, cool, but more commonly you'll see professors do it the top way, so, and less commonly the bottom way. I will tell you that every professor will accept the top, not every professor will accept the bottom, so you're better off just drawing out both enantiomers in this case. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, consider giving me a like and a share. A couple of the best things you can do to help promote the channel. And if you've got questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you're looking for the study guide that went with this lesson, or if you're looking for practice problems for alkene addition reactions, check out my premium courses on chadsprep.com.